Hi guys, there's a video on the SC Dawa channel, the Speaker's Corner Dawa channel, about a claim in the Quran where they attempt to reassert the claim even though it has been thoroughly refuted, debunked and even ridiculed. Now, as I explained in the first video in this series, I'm going to use four simple points as criteria in different segments, which is format, presentation, contents, and then impact, where I will look at some of the details in each segment and see if I can classify some of the material they provide and come up with descriptions that will help others analyze the contents more easily when it is compared with reality. This will also show other Islam apologists and non-Muslims alike how incredibly easy it is to refute and debunk and actually ridicule apologist claims. To help apologists come up with more sophisticated and intellectually stimulating arguments. So instead of blocking and censoring me, they should be grateful for the service I am providing to help them improve their standards. And it's free. Because, look, if I can rip your trivial ramblings apart, so can anyone else. And it doesn't matter how often you misuse words like epistemology, transcendent, or external particularizer. Uh, there must be an external Parti particularizer of the universe. <laughs> Only a hijab can think of this. Now, in the format, the video runs just over a quarter of an hour and has Imran Hussein and Adnan Rashid, um, well, dressed in 7th century attire, um, they're proudly presenting their reading skills. Reading classical Arabic, something neither one of them has studied. Now, you can't grow up with it since it's a dead language and requires a separate study to fully understand. The title of the video is Adnan Rashid Reads the Quran from the Time of the Prophet PBUH, which is uh, problematic. Now, Adnan Rashid has not studied ancient Arabic and can't read the real, actual, original Quran. He does not read all the, you know, more than 6,000, six whatever sentences in the Quran, but just a few. What he reads are just bits and pieces of a fragment and not a Quran. The fragments are not dated as being anything specific, but cover a likely range. We don't know whether Muhammad really existed, and if yes, where and when. And finally, this Rashid gets so excited, he occasionally forgets the PBUH after the Muhammad or after the Prophet, which is you know important for Sunni Muslims and totally puzzling for those not afflicted with the Islam virus. So the title already is factually incorrect in every possible way. Something we find in all the Islamic apologist videos and lectures is a mind-numbing repetition and this here is no exception. It seems the statements must be repeated often to be accepted as being correct even if they are not. Now, the presentation is quite simple and, and totally unconvincing. I'll show later how you could do this better to involve the audience and actually make your point, which here I did not. It starts in the middle of something as an excerpt, probably from a stream recorded previously, or maybe they were just doing practicing runs, I don't know. Having a text on screen with an invisible cursor is not exactly helpful. They should learn from Christian apologists like Christian Prince on how to put up a convincing screen display. I mean, his, his contents is actually quite pitiful, but he sure knows how to present it. The way this here was set up had me facepalm several times and asking myself what this was supposed to do other than show the incompetence of Islamic apologists. After the reading session, we get some scenery video clips with some text over it. Nice. And that's the end. <laughs> the content, don't worry, it, it gets a lot worse. We presented an item from a BBC News, whatever item, introducing a Quran fragment found in a library in Birmingham without any explanation whether it was donated or simply stolen as a memoir of someone stationed in the Middle East in the past sometime.
And these leaves, when you look into them a little bit, were actually known for around 80 years and part of a large collection. Now, the, the BBC News item is incorrect on several points, as there are fragments from the 6th century before the narrative of Muhammad's job as messenger actually begins. They, in the BBC item, they refer to Muhammad as though this was a historical figure, something an academic at the University of Birmingham should not be doing. But it is true that this is indeed one of the oldest fragments we know of today and provides great insight regarding the oldest forms of Arabic and its development in the different variants of the Quran. But it is definitely from the first century. No, 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 it is not. It very clearly says 568 and 645 CE with a 95.4% probability spanning a time frame from before Muhammad to after Muhammad according, and we always have to add this, according to the standard narrative. It refers to, and I, I cannot stress this enough, it refers to the skin of the dead animal and not the date something was written on it. Remember, the, the Chinese invented paper. The Muslims didn't have this yet. So they had to use all sorts of things, even, you know, pieces of bone and, and things like that. So it, it was like a time consuming effort to prepare skin to be able to find ink that will, you know, write on this and it will stay on this. This is why the calligraphy is, is as a form of art. But if you carbon date something, it cannot tell you when something was written. It can only tell you when the skin was prepared. And if you are prepared to sacrifice some ink, it can tell you when the ink was prepared as well. But that's it. You can never go and, and simply by carbon dating, find out when something was written. This, this takes a lot more. Most Muslims don't seem to grasp this and pretend that this is the recording of a scribe at a precise moment. It is not. And no, there is no need to spread falsehood. We must be honest and admit nobody today knows anything about the who, where and when regarding the Quran. Adnan Rashid does not have the mental capability to accurately assess any of this. And he doesn't even know what he's talking about. What surprises me is that if a scientific test reveals something our little zealots like, it is readily accepted. But when we find something in reality that goes against the narrative, it is vociferously rejected as scientism. <clears throat> okay, just to calm everyone down, we're talking about just two leaves, all right? Bits of parchment with tiny parts of text resembling something around chapters 18 to 20 in the Quran in a script used at the time. No surprise there since there was only the Hijazi form and the, the Kufic only came a few centuries later. What is surprising that this dating would contradict the common understanding of Uthman collecting and collating the Quran around what 650 whatever and burning all the remaining sheets. So how this survived and when it survived is a bit of a mystery and must be for all Muslims who believe the standard narrative because it goes against it. Now, my, my personal opinion is that the Quran was first written by Umayyad Caliph Abd al-Malik. This, this would explain why the first versions of the Quran we have are dated to around 9th or 10th century. One example is the well-known Blue Quran, a beautiful work of art, by the way. And this was the period within the diacritical marks were added to aid in the reading. But I think it was Abd al-Malik who collected the existing, especially Surat al-Baqarah, al the second, <clears throat> second chapter. So he collected all the bits and pieces and then had the rest written up to match this. So this is my personal opinion. And this is further substantiated, by the, by the way, because the text on the two fragments has two items I have not seen on earlier versions. The sentence and chapter divisions and some rudimentary diacritical marks. 
Now, this to me indicates that the skins were prepared around that time, you know, sometime in the 7th century. But the text, and it's, it's, it's a memory jolt, it seems like it anyway, were written much, much later. So they used the skins, maybe washed off what was written on there and reused the skins. So it's no wonder that the skins can be dated to around the 7th century, even if them, the, the Quran sentences were written much later. It could be 8th or 9th century, we don't know. And the Italian scientist, Dr. Alba Fedeli, who actually realized the difference between these two fragments and other leaves it was attached to in the Mingana collection, cautions everyone as to then sensationist headlines and refers to further tests and analysis, not placing any particular weight on the result of the carbon dating exactly the way she should. Rashid, on the other hand, starts reading something he claims is from the old leaf of the Quran and resembles exactly what we have in the Quran today. But we have no way of verifying what he is actually reading. Because I know that he's not studied ancient Quranic Arabic. So I have no way of, of verifying that he can actually read um, Hijazi or, or Kufic script for that matter. Now Hussein does his best to move the near invisible mouse pointer, but he gets lost since he can't really read what it says there. So we hear some text from a chapter from the Quran and then from a different one or whatever. We, we don't know. So we have two people bullshitting us all the way because they have no clue what they're doing, but they're pretending that they do. But now let's do this a little bit better and put the reading of the modern Quran on screen. This is what it looks like in today's version. And if you then put the reading of uh, what, what Atna reads, it looks like this. In my modern copy here, which is in front of me, I'm doing a comparison word by word. And word word by word. Yes. Why are you guys through? I, I noticed this, these dots after Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Higher separators. Okay. Higher separators. Allah. Higher, Allah. higher separators, yes. This is the, these, these dots separate the verses. SubhanAllah. Allah. Even the verses Allah. were separated as early as that. Okay. Allah. So we have done Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm pretty sure everyone can decipher Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim thus far. Okay, okay. But the, the script is ancient. It is early Hijazi script. So I don't expect everyone uh, to read this. Okay, uh, it can be read by experts, right? Now, next word after Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim immediately is Ta-Ha. Yeah. Okay, Ta and Ha. Okay, it's there. You can see it with the cursor. Yep. Good. Next one. Ma anzalna. Ma anzalna. Alayka. We go to the next line now, Brother Imran. Yeah. yeah? Alayka. This is Alayka. Okay. al quran -a. عليك القرآن okay لتشقى لتشقى okay exactly word by word what we have in our modern copy here okay mm -hmm. the ancient Quran is on my screen on the laptop here in front of me okay I'm reading from a laptop here okay and then I have the modern copy opened in front of me right here okay we'll, we'll bring the so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go to the next verse now okay yeah. illa Tazkiratan illa tazkiratan liman yaksha. Okay, now next verse. Next verse after that. Okay, tanzilan. It's the next verse. Okay, next line. Next line, yep. Yeah. Okay, the first word of the next line is tanzilan. Ta, noon, okay, za, and ya, and lam. Okay, lam alif. Tanzilan, mimman. Okay, khalakal arda was samawat. Al-Ula, okay, I'm reading it deliberately in, 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 in a broken way so that people can actually see the exact words I'm reading, okay? Yeah. I'm, 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 breaking, I'm breaking the words, okay? We're at the end of the third, the, the end of the third line. Uh, okay. Now, right? Tanzeelan mimman khalaqa al-arda was al ula okay? This is how you read it in flow, but I'm breaking it down. Mm -hmm. Next verse, the very next li line, the first word of the next line is Ar-Rahmanu. Okay, put the cursor on that, please. Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arshi istawa. Okay, is that clear? Yeah. Exactly the same words in the modern copy of the Quran. The one I'm reading from is... And you can see, they must have rehearsed this a couple of times, but it still gets lost. No surprise there. Okay, what is all this in aid of? Well, the Quran claims that it's protected from corruption, whatever that may mean. It also claims that Torah and New Testament were modified by people and can no longer be trusted. But... The Quran is protected. 
So, these Muslims here pretend the text from several centuries ago is identical to the text we have today, which is total nonsense on several different levels. First off, this script, as we have seen just now, has changed considerably over time. So the Arabic over the centuries looks vastly different and is used and pronounced vastly different, which has led to Quran variants. The, I mean, the most obvious are the, the Hafs and the, the Wash variants. I mean, it's easy to see. Then you get the even more significant differences, like scribal errors, where the word commanded has been wrongly copied as prohibited, haram. If you take the sentence and read it with commanded, it makes sense. Whereas if you leave the word uh, haram, in other words, prohibited in there, it doesn't make any sense at all. Now, anyone who speaks modern day Arabic will easily spot numerous mistakes and variants, even if the language has progressed and is, is different. And non-Muslim Arabic speakers do as well. Only Arabic-speaking Muslims seem to have autocorrect glasses implanted so they don't see these. I don't know why. The Quran itself, hardly any Muslim knows this, that it was released in Cairo in 1924. And that is the version we have today, except for some versions where we find some differences, that is. And they do exist. Like a version in Kuwait had to be destroyed. I think it was in Kuwait um, because Allah was apparently not paying attention, allowing 380,000 copies, I think it was, um, to be faulty and to be printed and they had to be destroyed. While reading, Adnan himself stumbles on a variant, something he calls the invisible alif. Okay, now there is a very tiny, uh, small difference in the spelling here in Fakala and the way Fakala is written in the modern copy, okay? Mm -hmm. Fakala here is written uh, with the, the invisible alif. Which is a missing letter. Let's let's be very clear about this. It's like me writing, he clues where I leave out the A, which would make it a cause. Now, if this is invisible and it's not there, it can change the word considerably. Like, for example, Islam and Salam. Both the same SLM root, but one is submission and one is peace. It's very different. So the thing is, we have thousands of books where the contents has not changed for a thousand years. Were all these written by gods? Is the mere fact that a text has not changed over time sufficient to take this as an indication that it is of divine origin? Really? Come on. And then we have scholars, real Islam scholars, and not these two Muppets. And these real Islam scholars are openly admitting that there are what they call problems with this claim. They know there are variants. And even a Dr. Yasir Kadi, who I personally think is honest enough, he says that there are problems and that Muslims, standard run of the mill Muslims, should simply not talk and not know about this. They don't have the background knowledge. He points out that even non Muslim scholars are pointing to holes in the traditional narrative and Muslim scholars have no answers, i.e. there are mistakes and inconsistencies in what is in the Quran, and Muslim scholars are well aware of this. It is enough for the Muslim to know that the Quran is the speech of Allah that has been protected, and what we recite is the kalam of Allah. That is enough for the Muslim to know. These issues should only be discussed amongst people who know what the Qiraat are, and who understand some of these questions that are being the crisis was very simple. The issue of ahruf and preservation and qiraat and relationships between them, these are very, very difficult issues. And the most advanced of our scholars, they're not quite fully certain how to solve all of the unanswered questions in there. These are now well known within the Western Academy uh, that they're bringing forth issues. Their level of now knowledge is leaps and bounds above what it used to be, you know, 100 years ago, you know. And by and large, our ulama in the Eastern world are not aware, by and large, of what's going on in the Western side of things. And they're not answering those questions in a manner that it needs to be answered. And this is something all of us that are in academia fully acknowledge. This issue uh, of Ahruf and has troubled the Ummah from the very beginning of times, nothing new. And there are 15 opinions about this. None of them fully answer all of the questions that are raised. Some of them answer more than others. Okay, but what now is the actual impact? In all honesty, it's none. 
We know the claims in the Quran are wrong as soon as you start investigating them. And this is no different here. What they should have done is put the two texts next to each other, demonstrate the similarity, and they did not do that. And I don't know why. And look how easy it is. I mean, here you can see, if, if you put them next to each other, you can see that there is hardly any resemblance. So you can't really tell whether they are identical or not. Now, it, it's very obvious that these texts are different. And they were subject to normal evolution and they developed over time. But now hang on, a god would most likely have made the text complete immediately and created everyone with the ability to read it and intuitively understand the contents. But this is not the case. And this indicates that this is not a God who wrote this, that this is just a normal book written by people in a script that was available at the time, which changed over time to what we see today. Now, it's obvious that the Quran is man-made, with all built-in flaws, inconsistencies, contradictions, and mistakes we humans tend to make. It's obvious. And Muslims will have to accept this reality, or continue watching Islam crumble around them. Now, are these kind of videos useful where some minor issues are fitted with some makeup to deceive others? Is SC Dawa actually doing anything positive for Islam? No. Not, come on, not as long as the Quran propagates slavery, misogyny, violence, hatred, and bigoted supremacy, we should not worry about the formatting. So, I'm sorry, the video gets an F for fail. So, in summary, there still is no good reason to believe gods and goddesses exist. So, I don't. Thanks for your time and hopefully see you in the next video. Bye.